Hi divers! My name is Ben, I'm instructor for GOE and in this video I explain to you what kind of scuba diving suit you should bring to your GOE fundamentals class. This is a whole series about how to be best prepared for the GOE fundamentals class. So consider subscribing to my channel and never miss a video again. Coming up! This video is about what's the best diving suit for the GOE Fundamentals class. Thermal protection is one vital part of your equipment and even if you do the class in tropical waters, you would want a suitable thermal protection. Your body temperature is around 37 degrees centigrade or 98 Fahrenheit and almost all the time the water you dive in is going to be significantly colder than your body, so you need to have appropriate thermal protection. However, there are many questions I get asked frequently by students before signing up for the class. Let me answer the most common ones now. GOE does not prohibit wetsuits on the fundamentals class in any way, so technically you can do it. However, many students do the class in colder waters. And be honest. Is your wetsuit able to keep you warm enough for four consecutive diving days with two to three dives per day, each lasting about an hour? Remember, most likely on the fundamentals class you are going to learn many new skills, meaning that this class is not just fun diving, but requires being focused on the tasks. Starting to shiver from chilly water will have an impact on your ability to do exactly that. So even if you can do the class in a wetsuit, for most students attending the class in moderate temperature, a dry suit is, pun intended, warmly recommended. Most dry suits are made of whether neoprene or a fabric called trilaminate. The advantage of neoprene is that the material itself offers some insulation properties and is relatively rugged. Trilaminate dry suits are not insulating by themselves and the material has to be reinforced with rugged paddings made of, for instance, Cordura or Kevlar. Underneath both suits you need to wear thermal protection to increase the insulating properties. The downside of neoprene as a material is that it is not only relatively heavy, but neoprene is, when it is compressed due to the ambient pressure that increases with depth, that it loses buoyancy. While being perfectly weighted at the surface, the diver is often heavily overweight during the deeper parts of the dive. And even more important, due to the compression of the neoprene, the suit loses some of its insulation on depth, where the water is cold, while it has the best insulation at the surface when it's mostly warm anyway. Trilaminate suits don't have these problems. The suit is not insulating itself. All the thermal protection comes from the undergarment. Since you inflate the suit, it has the same constant volume at every depth, meaning that it offers a constant buoyancy and a constant insulation at every depth. These advantages make trilaminate dry suits to be superior in comparison to neoprene suits. That's why I almost always recommend a trilaminate dry suit over a neoprene dry suit for a GOE fundamentals class. No matter what material your dry suit is made of, it's vital that the dry suit fits very well. If it's too large, it creates a lot of bulky air pockets ruining the trim. If it's too snug, you can't move properly what makes it hard to reach your valves for instance. As always, you should definitely contact your GOE instructor or GOE friendly dive shop before taking the class to check on your dry suit. On your GOE fundamentals class, you're going to need two pockets on your suit. If you're doing the class in a wetsuit, you can find some inexpensive shorts like these with pockets attached to wear over the suit. 
No matter if you're using one of these or doing it in a dry suit, make sure to have two appropriately sized pockets. Just think that you need to carry an SMB plus spool in the left pocket and a backup mask and wet notes in the right pocket. Your pockets should be equipped with two bungees each to clip your gear to. If your pockets don't have these bungees, you can get these bungee ropes in almost every do-it-yourself store. You can just tie this rope to the D-rings inside the pockets. If it does not have D-rings, you need to be creative to be able to fix the bungees inside the pockets. You should check with your gear instructor and maybe your local dive store to find a solution. At any time, you can leave me a comment with your questions. Anyway, get these bungees. This is important, otherwise you're gonna lose your gear very, very soon. The pockets should have attached a Velcro here to close the pocket. Just having a zipper to close the pocket makes it difficult to open and close it, especially with thick gloves, like dry gloves. Apparently, your dry suit needs a zipper. The zippers are made whether from metal or plastic. There are different types in the market. Metal zips are rugged, but have the downside that the metal parts wear the rubber parts after a while, making it necessary to replace the zipper after some years. If you dive often like me, a metal zipper doesn't last much longer than two years. At least, my metal zippers never lasted much longer. That's why I switched to the YKK plastic zippers. They are really lightweight and I have the feeling they wear out slower than the metal zips. However, it's more important to keep them clean from sand and dust, otherwise they start leaking, while metal zips are often more forgiving when it comes to sand and dust. Plus, it's harder to break them, especially the teeth on the zipper if you put it into a bag for instance. In the end, the material of the zipper is a personal preference. You can use either type of zipper during the fundamentals class. Another important part of your dry suit are the seals. Most commonly, the seals on the neck and the wrists are made from latex. Latex seals are durable and one can easily see if they are worn out so you can replace them before they break. Silicone seals are mostly a bit softer and many people find them to be more comfortable to wear. However, the biggest downside of silicone seals is, in my opinion, that it's hard to tell if they are worn out or not. Quite often it happens that a silicone seal breaks without a warning and that can really ruin a dive or even a whole class if you don't have a suit that allows the quick exchange of seals or if you can't get them as a replacement. So if your suit allows to quickly exchange the seals, please bring some new ones as a backup. The last type of seals are neoprene ones. The big advantage of neoprene seals is that they're very rugged. And they can mostly be glued even during a class easily if one breaks. Plus, they offer some additional insulation. However, the downside is that very often, at least in my personal experience, neoprene seals are not as watertight as latex or silicon seals, especially in the neck if you turn around your head a lot. That's why I almost always recommend latex seals for the GOE Fundamentals class and have them installed on my own suits as well. Still, you can show up for the class with silicon or neoprene seals too, if you like. A P-valve is a valve installed mostly in one of the legs of your dry suit, giving you the possibility to, you guessed it, to pee during the dive. Staying well hydrated is very important when diving. However, drinking enough combined with being submerged leads to the so-called diving diuresis. The reason is that blood volume is shifted towards the body center, which stimulates the kidneys to produce more urine, leading to the need to pee. Think of dives for 45 to 90 minutes for the fundamentals class. Most people can stay in the water for this time without the need to see the restrooms. However, very often people tend to drink too less before the dive in order to avoid going to the toilet. 
This is terrible advice. If you feel uncomfortable with dive times of around 90 minutes without going to the toilet, you should invest in a P-valve. Still, it's not mandatory for your GOE fundamentals class. I put some links to suitable P-valves in the description below. Very often people come to classes using so-called rock boots on their dry suits. Although this is not a standard violation, I wouldn't recommend using rock boots. I know they are great to walk over rough surfaces. But we wear our suits for diving and not for a hiking trip. And when it comes to propulsion and maneuvering techniques, rock boots are in my personal opinion not flexible enough. I personally wear only neoprene socks with turbo soles, in this case Kevlar reinforced on my feet. If you use a bit more rugged pairs of boots, it's still important that the boots do not negatively impact the range of motion of your feet. That's why I do not recommend rock boots. The undergarment, as the suit itself, should be the right size first and foremost. If it's too snug, it has a negative impact on your range of motion. I've seen many students getting only a provisional certification on the class for the inability to reach the valves due to a poorly fitted suit or undergarment. As I said before, check with your GEO instructor or GOE friendly dive shop if your undergarment is suitable and has the right size. The undergarment should not only fit well, but be appropriate for the water temperature. You're doing commonly two dives of around one hour per day on three to four consecutive days. Sometimes the dives can even be much longer in the fundamentals class. So if you do the class in warm waters, a medium thick undergarment is just fine. If you're doing it in freezing cold water, like in the winter time in Northern Europe, you should wear the thickest one you can get and maybe a heating vest on top. One final remark on dry suits in general. Independently from the brand, the question is not if your dry suit leaks somewhere after a while, but rather where it leaks. In my personal experience, no dry suit is always really dry. Very often you feel some moist or even wet patches on your underwear because the suit leaks somewhere. Don't be too worried about that. If it's really much and annoying, you should try to find the spot where it leaks from. I'm going to make another video on how to find leaking spots on your dry suit soon. Even if you have some minor leaks on your dry suit, I recommend a trilaminate dry suit for the class to almost every GOE fundamental student. In most cases, it's just more comfortable. When it comes to dry suits, there are many different brands in the market, offering different levels of quality at different price points. Although I know it's possible to get nice dry suits really, really cheap, I would recommend to spend at least 1000 to 1500 euros on a dry suit and a couple of hundred euros more on the undergarment. You may get something cheaper, but very often it's not worth it. Remember that the bitterness of poor quality remains long after the sweetness of low price is forgotten. I put some links to, in my view, appropriate dive suits in the description below. It's not that these are the only suitable ones, but I made some personal experiences with these suits and can recommend them. If you already own a dry suit, please leave a comment which one you are using right now and if you are satisfied with it. Since this is a whole series on how to be best prepared for the GOE Fundamentals class, make sure to subscribe to my channel and never miss new valuable content again. Feel free to watch the other videos of this series. See you there.